Welcome again, saints of the Most High Yah, who said, I am that I am. Tell them I am and sent you. I, of course, am your dearest servant and lesson teacher. Brother Dale, Brother Pastor Brian Dale from right here live at the sanctuary at St. Mark. Today is July 9th. Lesson six, the kingdom has come upon you. Devotional reads Matthew 6, 15, 5 through 15. Background scripture, Matthew 12, 1 through 32. Today's scripture, Matthew 12, 22 through 32. And the, I'm going to read these verses and we're going to talk just a few minutes. Kingdom and healing, Matthew 12, 22 through 24. And saint to just ask you to subscribe, obviously, to our channel. Let the Lord lead you, whether you give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. That's great. But also want to encourage you to support our ministry here uh, at St. Mark by going down to my website link at sermondownload.net in the description section and taking advantage if you like this if you like these lessons my private pastoral sermon notes they're a whole nother level no matter what size package you buy whether it's five whether it's 12 24 whatever you buy go down sermondownload.net for slash shop support our ministry i promise you you're gonna learn something kingdom and healing matthew 12 22 24 again verse 22 then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil blind dumb and he healed him inasmuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw and all the people were amazed and said it's not the son of david but when the pharisees heard it they they said this fellow does not cast out devils but by belzebub the prince of devils i want to explain something to you to you all today i want to explain something to you today before we go any further you need a definition of blasphemy of the holy spirit because that is what happened here blasphemy of the holy spirit and if you remember jesus warned and it's not probably not yep he's going to say it here but i'm gonna say it right now jesus warned people that blasphemy of the holy spirit people can blaspheme he said against the son but any blasphemy of the holy spirit shall not be forgiven in this life nor the next so i'm telling you believers when you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, even if you think you saved, Jesus is not, and you do it with full spiritual knowledge. That's why he said you are in danger of hellfire. There's going to be no forgiveness for you. I'm going to give you an example of that. So years ago, I was compelled to go and confront a once real prophet of God, now false prophet of God named Brian Karn. You all heard of him, B-R-I-A-N-C-A-R-N, go to Google. So this was in 2010. I went to church in Denver, Colorado called Now Faith Church. He was in there false prophesying and lying. I got up in front of two, three hundred people, whatever was there, uninvited. And I called him back to repentance in front of all of them. Now, after that, you know, a couple, three church goons jumped on me. They slammed me at the altar. They, and I just, ah, repent. They were dragging me out. And he literally threw me out the back door. He's Christian. I'm telling this guy to repent. You know, he, he's lying. I'm calling him back to God. And when I was walking away, after I got up off the seat, man, after they threw me up out of there, this is what I heard that man say. He said, that's what a demon looks like. I have it on tape. Brian Karn had full knowledge of God's word and he said somebody that came and told him to come back to Jesus was a demon. That is what happened here. With full spiritual knowledge, he did what he did. And you will see today he's a shell of himself. When you talk about blasphemy the Holy Spirit, this is what it is. Knowingly and consciously calling good evil and evil good. For instance, you heard a sermon, you heard a lesson, and you said, finger them up, you flipping them off, you giving them a finger, you doing all that other stuff, and you said nasty things about the Lord and about his messengers because you convicted. That's blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Blasphemy is calling good evil and evil good. Do you knowingly say those things that are good or evil? These Pharisees, now these were leaders today, these would be pastors and church leaders looking at one of God's prophets or one of the real men of God do things, heal people, speak in tongues. And these people would say he's doing that by devils or saying, oh, he, he ain't fake, man. He's just trying to get money. Calling good evil and evil good. That is an unforgivable, unpardonable sin. And if you've done it without knowledge, you need to turn to God right now in the name of Jesus and simply not do it again because before now, I know you guys didn't have spiritual knowledge. How many of you down in the comment section, how many of you have heard a, de a definition of blasphemy of the Holy Spirit calling good evil and evil good? That's what the Bible calls it. So I'm saying now that you know, don't ever do that. Now let's get to why they were doing it. They were doing it because jealousy, they were doing it because they did, but they said something, the Messiah was going to come, Messiah came. They didn't believe God. They called God insufficient. And another part of blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is you're calling God insufficient. You're saying your way is better. Do you know why Lucifer really got kicked out of heaven with those rebel angels? It's because of pride. Lucifer got kicked out of heaven because he blasphemed God. 
He called good evil and evil good. I didn't see him calling nothing evil in the Bible. I read Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28. He was, he was created, perfectly created from the very day he came into existence. But he said, I will ascend to the throne of the most high. I'll be like God. He told the Lord, what you've made me perfectly is not enough. Lucifer's crime was blaspheming God. People talk about, oh, people are going to hell because of X, Y, and Z. Stealing, murdering, robbing. That's not why people go to hell. Serial killers don't go to hell because they killed 10 people. They go to hell because they blaspheme the Holy Spirit. By rejecting Jesus, that is good, and saying that is not enough, like Lucifer did, that's evil. Hell was created for the devil and his angels, but everybody that blasphemes the Holy Spirit, as Lucifer did, called good, evil, evil, good. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is the only reason people end up in hell, because the sin issue has been dealt with. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The sin issue is dealt with on the cross. The issue is, will you take the remedy for that sin? And if you don't, you die, you blasphemed. You call good, evil, Jesus, God in the flesh, his sacrifice, good, evil, and evil, good. They blaspheme the Holy Spirit. This isn't just you. God keep doing that either. Leaders have done that as well. And I know that because leaders have blasphemed God's work in my life, pointing them back to him. Not just Brian Carr. Locally here where I live. We need to pray for him. He crazy. This same stuff when you speak righteousness to him. So be careful how you respond to conviction. That's what's going on here. Be careful how you respond to conviction. Matthew 12, 25 through 30. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto him, every kingdom divided itself is brought to desolation. Every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. This is the struggle of the church today. A kingdom divided. Y'all can say what you want to. We are so siloed, even in the small town where I live, that the kingdom is divided against itself while claiming to be doing the same work. It can't be true. We had a lesson, if you remember, not long ago called one for all, all for one, one for all. But yet when you come into places, everybody kind of got their own agenda. And as, as the Bible talks about kind of doing their own thing, divided is brought to desolation. The lack of power in our church as a whole is because of these little silos. Everybody done carved out their own little kingdom. And because of these ineffective conventions, State conventions, national conventions, whatever you want to call them, they're ineffective because everybody is doing their own thing and they have their own political agenda. I said it, pass it on to whoever you will pass it on to. I've been in the offices with these people, with your leaders. I've been on Zoom calls with national leadership. I was in state leadership at one point. I know what goes on behind closed doors and you don't. I'm here to tell you. Jesus said, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. How well and freely does the Spirit, the Holy Spirit move in your church when there's chaos there? It's not moving because that house is divided against itself. I will submit to you that denominationalism is a house divided against itself. I would some and even denominationalism is a house divided, but that doesn't necessarily even matter because it's the attitude and the outlook and the Holy Ghost walk of the leaders that divide it. And 26, and if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall, he, how shall his kingdom stand? And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils by whom your children cast them out, therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Or else how can one enter a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house? Jesus said, I done tied him up. He that is not with me is against me and he who is gathered with me scattered abroad. Here's another thing that I want to point out to you because of every very dear friend of mine told me tells everybody God brought him to bring everybody together God couldn't have told him that because Jesus right here said he that is not with me is against me and if he that gathereth not with me scatters abroad and if I bring in this Jesus said think not that I've come to bring peace but the sword to divide mother against uh, mother against daughter and it also says a man's enemies anyway will be they of his own house when I put those two together there's people that are saying Jesus they are with Jesus, but they're actually against Jesus because they're saying Jesus told them to do something that Jesus himself said he came to do the opposite of, which means they're greater than their master. Further contributing to a house divided against itself. Bad doctrine will divide a house against itself. Mm, kingdom in the spirit. Matthew 12, and I'm going to finish here, 31 through 32. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven. They know I told you. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven, neither this world or the world to come. Saints, as I finish here, have you blasphemed the Holy Spirit first? Without knowledge. If so, just go to the Lord and let, Lord, I didn't know that. But these Pharisees, they claim to know. 
like your church leaders, church leaders like me, if you've done it, if you call good evil, evil good, if your conviction got the best of you and you said something in your spirit or out of your mouth about the person that passed it on to you in love, you need to repent right now for calling good evil, evil good, which is def definition of blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. The second thing is remember, uh, these people tell you Lucifer's crime was pride. Yeah, don't let them tell you that. Lucifer's crime was a crime of everybody that's going to end up in hell in a lake of fire. And that's blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, which is calling good evil and evil good. Lucifer looked God in the face and said, that I'm not enough. You're not enough. I, I want to be more. That's or be like God. He wanted to take God's place because he didn't believe he was good enough. He didn't think or at least he spoke it. People that reject Jesus, they end up in hell in the lake of fire because they call good evil and evil good after being introduced to perfection. And finally, for you leaders, and I know I got a lot of church leaders watching. Thank you. Emails, Facebook posts. Thank you. Uh, just, just for your encouragement and even you haters. If you've blasphemed the Holy Spirit with full knowledge, you are in danger of hellfire. You claim to know God's word, but you still blasphemed against it like Brian, Brian Karn, like some local leaders here in the city where I live at. When God sent me to point them back to him, called me crazy. They need to pray for me. That's how you blaspheme. We got to pray. <laughs> oh, Doc. We got to pray for him. And you blaspheme. You're in trouble. Here's the good news. If you didn't have full spiritual knowledge, I said throughout this claim to have full spiritual knowledge, go to the Lord right now and say, Lord, I thought I knew. I did not. I turned from that. But if you did it like Karn with full knowledge, it's over. So be it.